it. So then, please explain this 83,407 we have to invest from today. This is the amount that you will have to put in every month to achieve that target of 10 crores after 25 years. If you delay this, if you say, I'm not going to act on it, I'll do it next year, maybe the next year, I'll do it. Some people say, I don't have enough money now, I'll start investing later and so on. Then what's going to happen is that this 83,000 and odd is going to become, after one year, it's going to be 92,000. After another year, it's going to cross a lakh and so on and so on and so on. And you can see annualized growth of this number with respect to the current result of 83,000 is about 11% and it's it slowly becoming 12%. It's increasing. So you can, the inflation that we have assumed is 7%, 6% or so. This is almost twice that. So that's why I keep saying inaction is deadlier than inflation. Hi, Patu. How are you doing? We've been waiting for this episode for quite a while. Yeah, I'm looking forward to talking about these calculators. We're going to do this so, yeah, I think a lot of viewers and listeners are as well. I have been for the last 20 episodes, right? This is all about a reality check, finding out where we stand in our financial journey. We told you we'd do this, but who has been very kind and very generous in helping us through these calculators. Uh, but to tell us a little bit before about the background of these calculators, uh, maybe a little bit of how you constructed them and then how are they part of the SEBI portal? That's just amazing. What's the story there? Yeah, so uh, so I started the, doing these calculations in 2011, maybe 10, something some, around that time. And I started building on the existing retirement calculators. I uh, saw what was available at that time and I started building on that, adding more and more inputs. And then it was basically my own journey. Uh, I started using it. Then I realized uh, I'm missing this aspect, add more mm -hmm. and so on. And then uh, I uh, co-wrote a book with PV Subramaniam uh, for CNBC TV 18 called You Can Be Rich Too with Goal Based Investing. And these calculators were part of the book. So they were available right. uh, on a website. And after, uh, I mean, uh, the publisher kind of moved to other things. They're, they're not into book publishing anymore. So I retain control of the calculators. It's still available uh, in free film cal. Maybe we can share a link on that. And then uh, you, you may know who Monica Hallan is. She's, yes. uh, she's currently the chairman of the SEBI Investment Advisory uh, committee. She was the editor of uh, Live Mint, right? Uh, yes. Uh, so, and then she moved on to this. So, I had interacted with her several years ago um, about one of the financial planning, one integrated financial planning template that I had. Uh, she wanted that to be part of the newspaper, but somehow that did not uh, uh, get to... Uh, uh, no, bear fruit. And then when she became the SEBI chairperson, uh, she suggested to the team that they work with me. And uh, so they, so we met in the SEBI regional office in Chennai. And then we started talking about how to build this together and so on. So I, I already had the PHP files of the tools and the associated JavaScript. So I, when I gave them, the SEBI team could, you know, use their own uh, CSS things and put them all together in one place. Amazing. We just so, we feel so lucky to be able to do this with you. Uh, for all our audio listeners, listen to us on Spotify, Audible, Ghana, Savan, etc, etc, wherever you listen to us and you do not have a visual medium accompanying you, uh, we will be sharing a link. Click on that link and you'll understand as we walk through it, as we talk through it. Um, and of course, if you can wait till the Thursday, you'll have this entirely on YouTube as well. So here's me sharing the first calculator, Patu. I hope this works. Um, the cost of delay calculator, and I hope you guys are seeing this. Patu, what is this calculator all about and why did you want to start with this one? So this is actually a retirement planning calculator. It also tells you what is the cost of delay in retirement planning. Sure. And so the inputs that you have is a very basic retirement planning calculator. And after you calculate the output, the corpus required and the monthly investment required, it also tells you what 
uh, are the implications if you delay that retirement planning by one year, two year, etc., etc., and so on. And the, I know many people who do this. They know that it's important to plan for retirement, but they just never get around to actually calculating with their inputs and you know, starting investing. And they just grow old as it happens. Right. So this hopefully will scare you into starting ASAP after this episode. It might so scare the first you too field, much, yeah. <laughs> But that's good, right? We've already addressed this, but to fear is good. It's a good emotion in terms of financial planning. Uh, current monthly expenses that will persist in retirement. Can you tell us a little bit what that exactly is and how is it different from our current monthly expenses? So, uh, we are not going to be spending money on our children in retirement. Hopefully, they will be independent. They'll be earning and you know, uh, they'll have a family of their own at the time by the time we retire. So those expenses uh, can be removed safely for school fees, tuition fees, this class fees, that class fees, all that can be removed. Then uh, most likely we may not be spending a lot of money on our parents or our in-laws mm -hmm. because they would have most likely passed on. So uh, I think you can safely remove that as well. Um, any loans, EMIs that you're paying, they're not going to be part of the picture uh, and retirement. So everything, all those goes away and therefore the remaining would be just the uh, expenses that will persist. And uh, is there something that we should not forget about these current monthly expenses that will persist? Say we make it 35,000 just for the sake of, right? Anything that you uh, think we should definitely include? But to, of course, they're usual, right? They're groceries, there's... So, if um, so that's how, see, when I first made the calculators, I just used to type uh, enter current monthly expenses alone that used to be the only entry then right. i realized i was actually forgetting annual expenses the once in a year expenses like health insurance see we are not going to be paying for life insurance after retirement that right. life insurance is no longer necessary but health insurance is going to persist and it's going to be a big chunk yes and uh, we also need to pay for um, you know uh, car insurance or any kind of once a, uh, in a year annual expenses that has to be done one thing that this doesn't take into account is that today if you buy a new mobile or a mm -hmm. laptop it's going to last you three years or four years some people destroy it even before that but for the typical reasonably careful user a mobile or a laptop doesn't last beyond three or four years so every three years you're going to buy a new piece of equipment uh, so and that is going to be a problem so which means that you will have to find a corpus to handle that but i would suggest that i mean if i'm going to uh, you know bring in all the bells and whistles of a retirement plan then the corpus will look too daunting our aim is not that our aim is to uh, you know shrug people out of their inertia and st make them start invest investing for retirement so so let's not take everything into account, but I'm just telling you as a caveat that this appliance expense is going to be there because your, your car is going to break down, your washing machine is going to go fud. So you need something right. to you know handle it. I think a fair amount would be a lakh and 50, but to who am I? Yeah, it depends. It really depends on the person. So for me, my health insurance is very ex uh, expensive. Exactly. But for somebody younger, it'll be a lot less. So, so as, can... as soon as I hit enter, it goes to 47,500, which is total average monthly expenses from the day you start retirement. Is that right? No, those are your current. Current. Expenses. Got it. Right. Current monthly annual expenses that will persist. I, and okay, so current, these are your monthly expenses. And then of course, you can take some data for the last one year or last two years and see if this is closely uh, reflecting that or mirroring that. Fair enough. What's next? Inflation before retirement. What is that, Patu? So this is the rate at which your uh, average monthly expenses are going to increase year on year, right until retirement. So a good number Currently would be, I would say, 7%. Anything lower than 8 is great. Okay. 7% uh, is okay. Maybe, I mean, if, if the numbers uh, that's going to come below shock you, the results are going to shock you, maybe you can shift it to 6. But 7 is reasonable. Because right. this 7% is not just the inflation of our 
uh, of the world around us of the actual monthly expenses that we are facing but they are also a, there's a component of lifestyle enhancement that also has to come inside here uh, of course actual lifestyle and uh, will change because in your 30s your lifestyle changes will be much higher in your 40s it. it will slow down a little bit and so on but so yeah we have to take that and you scared us with a figure of 10% at one point during this show part 2 of lifestyle when you include lifestyle inflation becomes close to 10% but let's yeah. not use it on this calculator to scare people is yeah. what you're saying yeah great 7% current age maybe of our average listener let's put it at 30 um what's a good age to put for retirement part 2 i think for most people 55 so i, I mean sure. the idea is to work for as long as we can Right. But there must be an age where our net worth is enough where working becomes a choice. Got it. So that, that is that age we are going to talk about as retirement. So we're going to define retirement as that way. So 55 would be reasonable. And life expectancy is 80 too low or is it a good number? What do you recommend? Yeah, 80 is probably too low because we mm -hmm. probably are going to be kept alive with all sort of pipes and sticking out of us. So 85, 90. So 90 is a good uh, initial start. But if again, again, if the numbers are too high, you can lower it a little bit. You yes, see, if you make it 85. Oh, the number years to retirement doesn't seem to be changing. I hope that's not a. No, that won't change because of, that's uh, 55 minus 30 is 25. Right. But 90 so minus. Years in retirement. Change. See, uh, see. Uh, ah, nine, years. Okay. Right. Years in Sorry. retirement is different. Yeah. Right. So as long as this 35 is changing, monthly expenses in first year of retirement will be two and a half lakhs. Is this basically the 47 and a half calculated with a growth of 7%? Yes. For the next 25 years. Yes. Got it. Inflation during retirement. What can you say about that? Yeah. So if you have assumed 7% before retirement, I think it's uh, okay to assume about 6% uh, after retirement. You're being generous, aren't you, Pato? Six. We have to just to, you know, because I have had readers who have uh, not slept for a week after using my retirement calculators. I can imagine. I mean, this is scary stuff already. There's a big number near the arrow. But anyway, we will get to that. So 6% <laughs> inflation during retirement, post-tax average return from retirement corpus. So this is can again a very, 10? yeah, <laughs> this is a crucial number. So this is going to be your entire corpus uh, so your, your entire corpus will have all sorts of components one is going to be your pension which is taxed as per slab then you will have mutual fund investments stock investments which when you redeem will be taxed as per capital gain rates uh, then you will have dividends which will be taxed as per slab rent which will be taxed as per slab so there'll be different components in it so you're going to say that your corpus is going to grow after tax at this average rate so it has to be as small as you can afford to uh, set it so eight hmm. percent would mean two percent real return so your inflation is six percent so that's two percent above that already two percent real return in retirement is i think it's too fancy uh, there are people who put four percent real return i think but at the age of 30 a guy can dream to achieve two percent real return but I would caution that with age, once you cross 40, 45 or so, you better come down to earth and, uh, you know, narrow this gap and set your real return to 6% or zero real return. Okay. So, I mean, uh, you're, so for now, let it be 8%. I think this is scary enough as it is. So, so total corpus required is 10 CR per two. Is this the amount we need in hand at the age of? At 55. 55. Yeah. And uh, when people see this number, they immediately uh, stop uh, thinking about investing. I've seen people say, oh my God, uh, I'm, I'm never going to get there. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm never going to get there. And speaking of glasses, they say uh, an empty glass is better than a half filled glass. I know people who argue like that. I'll rather, I, I'm, I'm never going to win the race. I'll rather not compete. <laughs> that's the kind of I think that's a very flawed way of thinking because most people don't get rich because they cannot imagine themselves becoming rich hmm. you have to appreciate that the gro the growth in the markets doesn't follow a straight line it is 
it's it's some kind of an exponential growth of course it's not going to be smooth but it's if you smooth it out it's going to be an exponential growth you have to tell yourself you you have 25 years from today and you can be that tenfold crorepati for sure if you put in money regularly yes the the number that you see uh, uh, below after we com uh, complete the next entry is going to be a little high the amount you are going to invest has to be a little high but invest what you can with age your your salary will increase you'll go to a new company you will you change jobs get promotions etc etc you have to push as long as you keep investing you'll get there so you have to imagine yourself to be rich to start uh, this process in the words of uh, mihai chick sent me i who created the concept of flow but to is coming to mind right he said you know you enter a state of flow which means you're really happy in what you're doing when your your requirements are slightly outside or above your capabilities right and then you can achieve and you can aspire to achieve and you work towards it and you get the sense of achievement of flow perhaps this high number is you know causing these people to kind of give up because it's just way too high but as pattu says there is a state of flow you can achieve when you start doing everything and you you know reassess it every single year and you realize hey you know my income has increased i have these new skills etc etc and the whole point is to start and then the key information is down the cost of delay uh, but going back but to this figure of 10% net rate of return what is this about so this is the kind of average rate of return on your investments from now until retirement so you expecting your corpus to grow year on year on average at this rate and 10% post tax um for the next 25 years on a corpus let's say you start with 60% equity 40% fixed income and after that you kind of lower it down 10% is not too bad i'll probably recommend a little lower but not 9 nice. 9 but 9 is for a slightly older guy i mean once they understand how things market works because we have 25 year old 30 year olds who say i will get 20% from the small cap mutual fund so mm. and they assume it's never going to go down so i think 10% is okay for now great so then please explain this 83407 we have to invest from today so yeah uh, so i uh, this is the amount that you will have to put in every month to achieve that target of 10 crores uh after 25 years and right if you delay this if you say i'm not going to act on it i'll do it next year maybe the next year i'll do it some people say i don't have enough money now i'll start investing later and so on then what's going to happen is that this 83000 and odd is going to become after one year it's going to be 92000 after another year it's going to cross a lakh and so on and so on and so on and you can see the annualized growth of this number with respect to the current result of 83000 is about 11% and it's it slowly becoming 12% it's increasing so you can the inflation that we have assumed is 7% 6% or so this is almost twice that so that's why i keep saying inaction is deadlier than inflation the delay the cost of that delay is uh, you know time time lost is lost forever money you can get back if you lose but you can't do that with time and that's the cost of that time lost amazing time loss is way more expensive than inflation uh, but to two things that i feel perhaps this sheet does not have one is that there may be an ability as you say right people should aim for 5% increase or 10% increase per year uh, of their investments right as their income increases so does this calculator take that into account or is it fixed at 83000 from today till retirement yeah so this is uh, uh, this doesn't take into account an increase in investing so what happens is when let's say i'm going to assume that i can increase my investments 10% every year what will right. happen is that this number this 83000 will fall down significantly it will even fall down to let's say 60000 or so maybe even less but that's nice but it's nice only initially because right. is that 60000 rupees is going to compound at 10% every year after 5 6 years if your income does not increase 
or if you have enhanced your expenses, then you will not be able to catch. So this is a very crucial number and uh, I, I think I mentioned this before. This is also the key number for those who are aspiring for very early retirement. So they should aim for much higher than let's say 10% is what I would recommend for everybody. 10% increase in investments year on year for everybody, for the normal guy. Maybe not so much for the freelancer or so because they'll have very irregular income, but for at least for the salaried guy. But for those aspiring early retirement, fire, etc., they should hit 15%, 20% every year increase. So, but that's but those are all additional objectives. But this is for the normal Joe. Great. Also, another thing that perhaps this calculator does not take into account is your current investments. This, yes. Is this assuming somebody has not invested a single rupee and starting from scratch, right? Yes, yes. Uh, so there is perhaps good news if you've accumulated a bit of a corpus already. Um, and and I think Patu has a calculator for that as well, which we'll delve into. But just last question on this calculator, Patu, are you assuming that at the age uh, we put our, we're expecting a lift till the age of 90. You're saying at the age of 90, this entire thing goes to zero. Is that how this calculator has been done? That That is the assumption, yes. Okay. Great. Uh, so on that note, Patu, um, we have another sheet to discuss since this does not have that key corpus. If you would like to briefly tell us about that sheet, I'm going to try and share that now. Um, tell us a bit, a little bit about this particular planner as well, please. So this is um, a full financial planning uh, template. So it has got four tabs. The first tab is retirement and then you can enter your other goals. If you can maybe scroll up and show them the tabs uh, on the top. On the top, sorry, yeah. So there are other goals, yeah. variable yeah. asset allocation and cash flow. So there are four tabs. So we will discuss the retirement uh, tab. So the other goals are for your ch child's future, et cetera, and so on. And then um, the, in the variable asset allocation allows you to first input a number uh, a rate at which your investments will increase every year and it also allows you to change the um, asset allocation. So we talked about this in the uh, what next episode. We said that you can't continue holding 60-70% equity uh, for uh, life or all the way until retirement. So you'll have to gradually taper down your uh, you know asset allocation. So uh, you can the, the variable asset allocation sheet allows you to tape, make those make that taper. Uh, so, it. and then you can, so there it gives you, of course, it has got a lot of entries, which you'll have to enter, unfortunately, but it allows you in principle to, you know, uh, make. So for case. example, Patu, year one will be 60 equity, 40 fixed income, for example. And then as we discussed in the previous e episodes about, you know, uh, rebalancing and de-risking, this is how it, you need to adjust for it, right? Is that Correct. what you're saying the sheet is about? Correct. That's right. Got it. Okay. Going back to the retirement calculator, um, I guess these are self-explanatory. You can enter your figures that are applicable to you, all you listeners and viewers. Uh, anything in particular about this sheet that you'd like to point out, Patu? For example, where do I put my current corpus? Yeah. So most of the entries, initial entries are going to match with that of the cost of delay calculator. So, and they're fairly self-explanatory, as you said. And once you've done with that, then if you can scroll down, I think uh, after and so here uh, you can see here the uh, you can explicitly write down the return you are going to expect uh, entry number 14 uh, right. so you post tax return expected from equity investments okay so that allows you some numbers so of course i, I the 14 default is value quite is high four, right? yeah. 14 yeah. is too high i would re reduce it to 12 or maybe even 10 but yeah so then uh, you can divide your fixed income to uh, taxable fixed income and tax-free fixed income. Tax-free fixed right. income would be EPF, PPF, LIC and so on. Uh, the other way to do it is you can say, look, I'll just put some number for, uh, some people have gold. Some people have got uh, uh, things like rights, which is a mutual fund investing in real estate and so on. So you can uh, use one of the entries, the taxable fixed income or the tax-free fixed income at, for other assets. So one you can use for fixed income, the other for other assets. So it's up to you, It's uh, depending on, because you're going to control the return expected. 
So you can put an appropriate return expected from uh, fixed income as our assets or taxable fixed income, current uh, tax-free fixed income, etc. It's up to you to decide. So if the value of your current investments is say 50 lakh, this is where you put it, right? Uh, row number yes. 17. So it also allows you to take care of the current equity investments, the current value right. of the tax-free and taxable fixed income investments. Okay. It also uh, tells you, so for example, some people who are going to retire, they'll get some gratuity, they'll get some kind of leave and cashment benefits and so on. So those are lump sum benefits. So that lump sum benefits can also be put in there. But this is something that a 30 year old or 35 year old will not know that they're too yes. far away. Or so, a freelancer will not know, right? What to? And it's probably not <laughs> applicable. <laughs> because if I put this to zero, uh, then the calculator does not work. So, do you have any kind of uh, hack for a freelancer? The, the lump sum? Yes, lump sum and current monthly mandatory EPF, for example. If these two go to zero and if you're a freelancer, they should be zero. How does one use oh, this calculator? I think that's probably something that I did not take care of. But you can put in some small number, maybe yeah. one or right. anything to... It won't change your num numbers too much. So finally, Patu, to summarize this particular calculator, this is the figure net corpus to be accumulated on day one of retirement, right? Am I right about that? Yes. And this sheet takes into account your current um, investments and the rate at which those current investments will grow until retirement. Got it. Fascinating stuff, Patu. Um, I'm sure a lot of viewers and listeners will have a ton of questions as they start to experiment, right? Uh, when I tried doing it, before I knew it, an hour had passed, maybe an hour and a half, right? So this this is time consuming, right? You take a lot of effort to enter figures that are re relevant to you and then a lot of questions pop up. So I have a feeling post this episode, we're going to be deluged by a lot of personal, uh, you know, anecdotes and case studies and saying, hey, in my situation, this is the case. What do I do, Patu, etc. Et so let's brace ourselves for a lot of questions and which we will, of course, answer. Uh, Patu, that's been delightful. I think this, you know, it's a real reality check. It tells you where you are, the cost of delay. Um, and gives you some benchmarks of how much you should invest if your current lifestyle is such and, uh, you know, if you want to retire in peace. But on that note, any last words, Patu, uh, for those who are scared about these calculators and, so, and any last uh, thoughts? Yeah, so uh, uh, if a retirement planning calculator does not scare you, you're doing something wrong. Your inputs are wrong. Your assumptions are wrong. Uh, they are too rosy. And so it must scare you. So it's meant to scare you. And but uh, the idea of that is just to get you going, not to, you know, uh, um, you know, freeze you up and say, oh, no, I'm never going to be. So I would suggest make a beginning, make a start. This retirement planning calculator is just a guideline to tell you, look, your uh, maybe what you thought of as your retirement corpus is probably small. In most cases, it's always many people think uh, they'll just get one lakh monthly pension. So I'll just have one crore, two crores and so on. Uh, that's probably not the case because you have to fight inflation after retirement. That is the big issue in retirement planning. So there are many aspects of retirement planning like uh, bucket strategies and so on. But we, we are looking at a young guy who's in the 20s, maybe early 30s less than 40 who is you no know, just wants to get started the right way and i think these calculators will uh, tell them this is where you need to be and you better uh, buck up and get working so that's all i have to say i also wanted to do a part on this episode where i enter calculations for say a 40 year old or a 45 year old and and then that perhaps would be a little too scary so but do it yourselves Go through this entire experience of a reality check and then, and we're here for you on Let's Get Rich With Part 2. Please like this video, share it, subscribe, tell all your friends about it because uh, this really, truly helps any ind any individual who's thinking seriously about retirement. Thank you so much, Part 2. See you on the next episode. Thank you. Bye-bye.